Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion about the building blocks of modern C++. Modern C++, from the beginning to the middle. In our last video, we started looking at the building blocks of C++ with data types and references. If you haven't seen that video, now would be a good time to go back and take a look at it, as we're going to build on those fundamentals as we start exploring expressions and value categories. As a brief review, a data type is nothing more than a classification consisting of values and the operations which can be done on those values. A data type is completely defined by these two items. An expression is a combination of a data type and a value category. Syntactically, it looks like a sequence of operators and their operands, and it specifies some computation that is to be performed. So for example, x equals two plus three is a perfectly good expression. It has a data type and a value category. So is a call to printf. It has a side effect, which is printing data to the screen or whatever your output device may be. But it also has a data type and a value category. It happens to return an integer, which denotes the number of characters written. A value category is the second property which makes up an expression. There are two basic value categories, an L value and an R value. Every single expression is either an L value or an R value. There are a few other value categories. In order to determine the value category of an expression, we need to ask a couple questions. Does the expression have a name? Does it have a memory location? And can you take the address of the expression? If an expression is an L value, it will usually have a name, and you must be able to take the address of the expression using the ampersand operator. In this example, we have a couple of L values. Button itself is an L value. It's a pointer to a widget. It has a name, so it's definitely an L value. You can also take the address of it. It's a local variable. It has a well-defined address. Star button is also an L value. So the, the thing that you get when you dereference button is also an L value. It doesn't have a name. There's no variable with that content, but you can take the address of it. So it has a location in memory, it has its own identity, therefore it is an L value. So let's take a look at an example. Is foo1 an L value? And is foo2 an L value? The answer is yes, both foo1 and foo2 are L values. They have a name, they have a location in memory, and you could take the address of them. I'd like to note that foo2 is const, that means it cannot be modified, but it is still an L value. Just because something cannot be modified does not change its value category. An R value. This is typically a temporary expression, something like 42 or true or null pointer. It doesn't have a name and you cannot take the address of it. So in this first example, some var is a data type of int and it has a value category of L value. It has a name and you could take the address of it. 35 is an integer, but it is an R value category. In the second example, we're assigning some var to 35. And any programmer will recognize that this isn't legal code, but the question is, why is it not legal? And the reason why this particular line of code is not legal is because 35 is an R value, and it's located on the left side of the expression. R values are not valid targets for assignment. So now we're gonna talk about references. There are three types, L value reference, const reference, and R value reference. We're very particular about saying the word reference every time we're talking about a reference so that we don't get confused between an L value reference and an L value category, which are nothing alike and not similar at all. It's very important to be precise in your terminology. So when we speak about these, we will always say L value reference when we mean the reference data type and L value when we mean the value category. 
So what does it mean to pass by value or pass by reference? The simplest form of parameter passing in C++ is pass by value. The called function gets a copy of the passed data, and so in this example, we have a function named func. It takes a value of type widget. This parameter is passed by value because there's no decoration on the data type. It's simply a widget. When we declare x to be of data type widget, it has a name. It's a variable named x, therefore it is an L value. We can call a function with x. We're calling this function with an L value. That's perfectly valid. And we can call this function with a temporary of type widget. This is the syntax for constructing a temporary widget on this line. That's a call with an R value, and this is also completely valid. In this code, we've added an ampersand. So the widget ampersand PB is passed by L value reference. In the first call to func, we're passing X, which is an L value category. In the second call to func, this is a widget constructor, which would be a temporary, an R value category. And this is not valid because the caller would not be able to see the changes made to the temporary widget. If we change func again to receive its parameter by const reference, the intention is that the called function cannot modify the data. So in this case, calling with an L value or an R value is valid, because there will be no changes that we have to be concerned about visibility of. The function will not change its past parameter. In this example, we've changed func again, and there are two ampersands. This is passed by R value reference. This time, the call to func passing X, where X is an L value category, is not valid. This is not valid because func might actually change the value of X, and the caller has promised not to look at the value of X after it calls func. On the second call to func, where we declare a widget constructor, which is an R value category, this is valid on pass by R value reference. Any changes by func would not be seen by the caller. So to recap the three types of references, when you receive a parameter by L value reference, the intent is that the called method will modify the data and the caller will observe any modifications that are made. A temporary may not be passed to a function that takes an L value reference because those modifications would never be visible in the caller. A const reference indicates that the called method or function cannot modify the data. We don't need to be concerned about whether the caller would see the modifications since there cannot be any, so either value category is valid. For an R value reference, the intent is that the called method will modify the data and the caller should never see the modifications. Therefore, only an R value category may be passed because if an L value were passed, the caller might see the changes after the call. As you've seen, an R value reference data type is declared using two ampersands. It can certainly be on the left side of an expression an R-value reference does not indicate the value category, it indicates the data type. So it does not indicate how you can use the parameter. C++11 extended the notion of R-values by adding the R-value reference data type and letting you bind an R-value value category to an R-value reference variable. Doing this prolongs the lifetime of the R-value as if it were an L value. And we'll show you an example of this later on. Just to recap, a data type consists of values and operations, and an expression consists of a data type and a value category. The takeaway from this slide is that under an expression, the data type could be an L value reference or an R value reference, and the value category is L value or R value. In this example, we're showing a somewhat unusual usage of R-value references, but one that's very useful to understand. First, we have a function named func. 
its return type is r value reference to int. This means that this function may return an r value. 42 is an integer literal, so its data type is int, and its value category is r value. Now, in main, when we call func, since it returns an r value reference, the call to func has the value category r value. This r value can be bound to foo. Foo is declared as an r value reference, so that's the data type of foo. Since it has a name, its value category is l value. This is a point that can often be confusing when you're new to working with r value references. The fact that foo has the data type of r value reference, but its value category is l value since it has a name. Down on the following line, when we compute foo plus three, this is perfectly valid. Foo is an l value. It has the value 42. That's an integer. So we compute the value 45 and place it in var. Then on the last line of main, when we assign the value 47 to foo, this is perfectly valid. Foo is an l value, and its data type is r value reference to int, which means it acts exactly like the original int, so we can perfectly well assign to it. If we change func to return an l value reference, this won't compile, because 42 is an r value, and an r value cannot bind to an l value reference. On this example, we have what looks like two very similar declarations. Var1 is an r value reference to this temporary widget. Again, since var1 is an r value reference, the lifetime of the temporary will be extended for as long as var1 is in scope. On the following line, it looks like var2 is an r value reference to auto, and you would think auto will be deduced to widget, and therefore var2 will be an r value reference to a widget. This is actually not what happens. Since var2 uses auto, the type is deduced. And when you have a deduced type with two ampersands after it, it's called a forwarding reference. It's no longer an r value reference. In this case, var2 will really be an l value reference, as if it were declared with a single ampersand. In this example, foo is a pointer to a const widget and some method wants a const reference. So what value category and data type can some method accept? And given that foo is a pointer, is it an L value or an R value? And what should be passed for X to some method? So the value category that can be passed to some method is either an R value or an L value. In terms of the data type, it needs to be a widget. Since foo has a name, it is an L value. And what should be passed for x? Star foo. In C++11, new value categories were added. But keep in mind, every expression is either an L value or an R value. These new categories are a refinement to make the standard more complete. So for example, there is a value category called a GL value. This is the generalization of the L value concept. It's something that has identity, but may or may not be moved from. There is also a PR value. This is what the standard calls a pure R value, which is what you would typically find for a temporary. And there is also the X value, which is an expiring value. These values have an identity and can be moved from. This is what you get when you have certain kinds of expressions involving R value references, usually the result of calling a function whose return type is an R value. That's the most common case that you will see. Again, these specific value categories are not that important in most cases unless you're writing a compiler. The major distinction that you need to understand as a programmer is the distinction between L value and R value. There are many additional rules about how value categories operate and when they're produced in the standard. Again, these are not typically used in programming. They are more for the interest of the compiler. The important thing to note is that 
Many of these rules were refined in C++11 when they added the new value categories. And so many of these rules were actually phrased incorrectly in the standard. In C++11, this entire value category part of the standard is fully defined and implemented in a better fashion. Another building block of C++ is the const qualifier. As you can see by these examples, const can be located in various positions, and the meaning of what is const changes depending on its location. Every const is interpreted as who is not allowed to change what. So for example, in const in var, var cannot be changed by anyone. In the void sum method const, that const means that some method will not change this. It's very important to contrast const expr, which was added in C++11, versus const. Const means somebody is promising not to change something. Const expr, on the other hand, means this value is a compile time constant. It is known at compile time and will never change. There are times when you have an expression with a given data type, and you need to cast it to a different data type. The order shown on this slide is from safest to most dangerous. A static cast will only compile if it is guaranteed to be valid at compile time. A dynamic cast is used when you're casting from a base class to a child class. This always compiles, but you might get a null pointer at runtime if the dynamic cast fails. A const cast is used to remove const from an expression. If you need to add a const cast, you might want to go back and look at the design of your code. It sort of implies that there was a flaw in the data types to begin with. A reinterpret cast is forcing the compiler, just do this cast, don't look, don't question anything I'm saying. A reinterpret cast is pretty dangerous because you're basically telling the compiler, I know more than you, and just do what I've told you. Reinterpret cast should be used very sparingly, if at all. And a C style cast is extremely dangerous and should be avoided at all costs because it could mean any of these. Our next video will be the third part of our three part series and we'll talk about semantics, smart pointers, variadic templates, and forwarding. For more information about Copper Spice, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching our video, and we hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions, feel free to email us or leave a message on our Copper Spice form. We'd love to hear from you. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in two weeks for our next video.